morning church um today's teaching text is luke 15 uh verse 8 to 10 i'll be reading from esv um when i'm done reading i'll say this is the word of the lord and then you guys can respond praise be to god it reads as follows the parable of the lost coin or what woman having 10 silver coins if she loses one coin does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it and when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy, bef there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, family. Uh, I hope you are doing well. And I hope you have had a wonderful Sunday and a restful one. I understand, though, that most of us slept way past our bedtime, and uh, we might be a bit snoozy this morning, but we will survive. Amen. Amen. So yesterday, I, in jest, um, after doing all that I needed to do at home, I had to go get lunch for, for the family, and I remembered that my wife had bought me a all-black shirt. And I decided to put it on and went to the shops to buy something for the family. You must understand that we are in Pretoria. Pretoria is no hal. <laughs> and yeah, the, the, the stairs that I got, the looks that I got, the comments that I got, yeah, it was, uh, it was an experience nonetheless. Um, I, I hope you are well. My name is Shia, my last name Le Hong, and I got the privilege this morning of uh, opening the Word of God with us all. I don't know what I would say I am to this church because Reno will come here and say I'm a pastor. Um, uh, Lesego would come and say I'm a pastor or I'm an elder and all that. You find me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need chairs packed, I'm there. You need something set up somewhere, I am there. So I'm just a servant. Amen. So this morning uh, we, we had a, a scripture reading there on top for us. And I, if you are one of those that uh, prefer to have um, titles for messages, uh, you can title this one Faithfully Committed. And, and as, as, as we were having our question of the day and some people are giving comments, uh, I heard Reno say to me that uh, it looks like uh, Ben has read your notes. <laughs> when talking about how relentless God is when, when it comes to seeking us, how relentless he is when it comes to finding us, finding the lost among us, and restoring us to our rightful place. Um, let me pray for us as we, we are about to begin. Dear Heavenly Father God, we come into your presence this morning. This is the day that you alone have made, O oh Father God, and you've called us to be in this place this morning to hear from your word, O oh Father, to hear from you, Lord God. Here I am availing myself, Lord God. I say, Father God, use my mouth, use my, vo my, my vocal cords, O oh Father God, to portray your message to your children, O oh Father. And those things that I fail to say, O oh Father God, I pray that may your spirit be the one that touch people's hearts and speak to them, O oh Father God, in their hearts. I'm not here, O oh Father God, because of my wisdom. I'm not here, Father God, because of my knowledge. I'm here, Father God, because I'm availing myself to be used by you. As a utensil, O oh Father God, for you to serve your food on, O oh Father God. So here we are, O oh Lord God, and we say, O oh Father God, may you bless each and every word that proceeds from my mouth from uh, now onward, O oh Father God. And we're trusting in you. We're surrendering everything to you, O oh Father God, giving it all up to you. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 So, where do I start? Let me start here. I don't know if you guys have ever lost anything in the house where you stay. You want to find it. Um, you cannot find it. For the life of you, you know that you have it. But you just cannot seem to find where it is. But that thing is very valuable to you. It may be one among many, but you know that finding it is very important. Constantly you will be sitting down thinking, but where did I put that? You know, sometimes you misplace your keys 
car keys or you are about to go to do something very important. But you cannot go because you cannot find your car keys. I would have said a cell phone, but I understand that nowadays we have people who have um, watches that can find their cell phones. So I guess that example would be out of the question. But yeah, you retrace your steps, try, trying to find that one thing that is very important, that one thing that is very valuable to you, so that everything can be restored to its correct order. Now, if you hear me referring to my girlfriend, just a disclaimer, she is my girlfriend indeed, but she is married to me. All right? Just so we are, we are clear. My girlfriend is married to me. She is my girlfriend because um, she has never stopped being my girlfriend. She has never stopped being my friend. So what she does is she likes things to be neat, for things to be in order. So recently she reorganized our garage at home and packed everything nicely. And if you get in the garage, you'll be able to see that no, everything is nicely packed. But there's a problem. <laughs> you see, I use the garage. She doesn't. She packed it. Everything looks nice. Now I need to do something. I need some tools in the garage. I don't know where to find them. And me going to ask her where those things are makes her feel like I don't appreciate the work that she did in picking things up. But I need to find my things and I cannot find it. I know that I'm blaming her. Okay? So this morning, we will be looking at the parable of a woman who had lost one of her precious possessions. I will be circling back a bit to this particular story about my girlfriend misplacing my tools. We will be looking at the parable of the woman with the lost coin. She was committed to finding what was precious to her. In the same vein, when we lose our way, we learn. We will learn to extend, we will learn to the extent to which our Father is willing to go to find us and restore us to our rightful place. There are three aspects or three things, three topics, subtopics that we'll be looking at uh, this morning. The first one is God is committed to you. Now, when you get to understand that God is committed to you, then you might be asking yourself one simple question. But if he is committed to me, why me? That is what we'll be looking at. Why you? And then once you know why you, then you've got to respond to those questions. And that is where we'll say, commit faithfully. Because he is committed to you faithfully. He is committed to you faithfully. Before we get deeper into this parable, let us look at who Christ was speaking to when he made this parable. You would understand that the parable that we are talking about today, the scripture from whence we read, it is a continuation, it's a part of three parables. The parable of the lost sheep, and then comes the parable of the lost coin, and then comes the parable of the prodigal son. But where does it the, all these three parables, why did he mention them? Why did Christ mention them? Well, for you to find an answer to that, you would need to go to the book of Luke 15, verse 1. That is where it all starts. In verse 1, it says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing nearer to him, to him being Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. You see, Jesus had to address the Pharisees and the scribes who perceived themselves to be more important than other individuals whom they perceived to be sinners. Even in those times, Jesus had to deal with people who have what we now call holier-than-thou attitude. Aren't we having the same kind of attitude nowadays amongst our midst or, or in our midst? Where you find people who say, but this one doesn't really deserve to be here doesn't deserve to, to be loved the way that they are loved, doesn't deserve to have whatever they are blessed with, simply because they don't believe in Christ. Or because they don't have the same attitude that you have towards certain things. What a better way to deal with their hypocrisy than giving a relatable life lesson in front of everyone. 
Sinners and those who perceived themselves to be righteous, the Pharisees and the scribes were lost, yet they were unaware that they were lost. Now getting back to the scripture, just before that, you see, Jesus here is showing that the gospel is not for the select few, but that the Father has enough room for everyone. Despite how you may look, despite who may say what about you, despite where you come from, there is enough room for our Father, in our Father's house, for everyone. Getting back to the scripture of the day, we see that this parable illustrates the Father's um, unrelentless pursuit of our hearts. No matter who you are, what social standing you hold, whether you win a rugby world cup or not, that includes the all blacks. The Father wants to commune with us all. He is committed to being with us. The woman in this parable does not just look for the lost coin. She first lights up the lamp, goes further and sweeps the house in search of the coin. Not only does she stop there, but she seeks it diligently. When you are lost, the way of God is the lamp that points you that, that points your way back to the Father. In Psalm 119, verse 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. The word is like a mirror that shows us what is wrong in our sinful hearts, in our ways, in our behavior towards God. The word exposes us for who we really are, where we really are, and how lost we are. Also, the use of the lamp in the parable shows how smart this woman is. Shining the light in the vicinity of the coin will result in the reflection from the coin, thus making it very easy for her to find the lost coin. She is committed to finding the lost coin. The Bible is full of stories showing how much he wants to be with us. Even when we constantly turn our back towards him or against him, he still follows us. He still pursues us. He still comes after us. If you need any more convincing, if you need any more or any further convincing on this particular aspect about how committed he is, just look at verse 10. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the house of, this joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. When you are lost and found, he rejoices. He rejoices. When the lost coin is found, he is rejoicing. And if you are here, have not yet been found, the angels of God are waiting in anticipation to celebrate your repentance. Just give the word and let the holy heavenly party start. The second thing that the woman did was to sweep the house. In those days, it was customary to spread pieces of straws on the floor. You see, if you were one of the affluent families, you would have in your house tiles, being rocks put together nicely. But if you were one of the poor ones, you would put straws, what we now call a straw mat, on the floor, just so that you can have a bit of cushion onto your feet. And it, uh, a coin falling down in, um, in it would naturally be difficult to find. A coin falling down between those straws would naturally be hard to find. Now that's using the broom to sweep away the pieces of straws. That's exposing the lost coin. It is worth mentioning also that in those times, one, one silver coin was equivalent to a day's wage. It mattered to her. She had to find it. She had lost a tenth of her life savings. That is why it was important for her to find the lost coin. I don't know if you have ever moved houses, 
and you are looking for something in the boxes that you haven't fully unpacked, and say, for example, you are looking for a knife, and as you are searching and opening one box, you find um, uh, where you, you find spoons. The question is, would you stop looking for the knife simply because you found the spoon? No. Spoons are also important and they need to be put in the right place. But you will continue searching until you find what you are looking for. You continue searching. You continue searching. Similarly, in the process of sweeping the house, there may be issues that need to be dealt with. There may be unrepentant sin that you need to turn away from. God does not say, go deal with yourself first, go fix yourself first, and when you are ready, come to me. God says, come to me just as you are. I am coming after you just where you are. Whether you find yourself in a place full of darkness, he still will come there and bring forth the light. Because he pursues you to the ends of the earth. He will pursue you until he finds you. Our transgression will not remove his love from us, nor deter him from his unrelenting love for us. Sometimes we are the lost coin. Sometimes, just like the lost coin, we find ourselves in situations we are not supposed to be, either be through our own conduct or because of circumstances. But we see the Father will not relent until we, like the lost coin, are found. He will not be deterred by the debt and the filth that he finds while in pursuit of us. God comes in the midst of the debt to find us, removes us from the debt, and restores us to our rightful place. He is committed to finding you and I. And the third thing that the woman does is to seek diligently for the lost coin. She is persistent in her pursuit. She is diligent. The Oxford, Oxford, Oxford um, Dictionary defines diligence as having or showing care and consciousness in one's work or duties. In her search, she lit up the lamp, she swept the house, and searched diligently. When we're talking about diligence, it means that the only thing that was on her mind was finding the lost coin. The only thing that is on God's mind is restoring us to him, putting us back to our rightful place. She gave herself the task of finding the lost coin. She did not just look around a little in her spare time. She stopped everything and swept the house. Centimeter by centimeter, she went over the floor searching for the lost coin. It was valuable to her. In the same way, comes God comes all out in search for us. In the same way, God never relents when he pursues us. When the woman finally finds the lost coin, she does not celebrate alone. Though she, though she searched alone, in Luke 9, in, Luke, um, in verse 9, it says, When she finally found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you that in heaven as well, when we repent from our sins, when we turn, when we accept him into our lives again, there is joy, there is rejoicing, there are trumpets, going forth simply because he is committed to finding you and I. He is committed to finding you and I. Yesterday, I, I was building or roofing a lapper when I wanted to. Uh, but then I couldn't find some of my tools. <laughs> couldn't find some of my tools and I was sitting there and I told my wife that I am going to be doing this but then I cannot find my tools and I cannot do it without my tools and I had to sit and I was thinking 
just so you know, uh, this time it was not her, her fault. Uh, these are the tools that I used two weeks back uh, when going to Lim before going to, to Limpopo. And I know that I placed them somewhere, but I couldn't figure out where they were. I was sitting and I was thinking, okay, maybe I put, because I remember putting something in an old tire. I went and I searched in the tire. The tire was empty. I remember saying, but where could I have put them? Eventually, I found that I, they were just lying there where I took out a drill. I took the drill cover and put them on top of the tool that I needed. But I found it, and I did the work that needed to be done. And when she came back from her errands yesterday, she came and she saw the good work that I had done. She was so happy. She rejoiced that I found the tool that I needed and did the work that I had to do. She was so happy uh, and pleased at the work that I had put in that she even promised to build me a man cave. <laughs> so rejoice with me because she is going to build me a man cave. <laughs> my lost tools made sure that my wife promises to build me a man cave. So I'm just saying it here now so that if she doesn't, <laughs> you know, I have got some people that can put pressure on her. Now you may be asking, yes, I heard you saying all that you were saying about God being committed to me, but why me? Why is he committed to me? And, 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 and why is my wife promising to build me a man cave? Well, because she loves me. And for us, it's because we met her. Despite what we have been through, despite what we are going through, we are loved. We are precious to him. That is why he will stop anything and everything and pursue us endlessly. As I was going through my notes yesterday, I, I was listening to just some um, nice worship songs and I came across a song by Anthony Brown and uh, Group Therapy. It is titled Worth. And the lyrics, is it lyrics or lyrics? Yeah, uh, those resonated with me. They go like, you thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me inside out. You thought I was to die for, so you sacrificed your life, so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell anyone and everyone I know, you thought I was worth it. He knows that you are worth it. He sees that you are worth it. But still you may ask, but why me? Well, let him tell us why us. Look at Jeremiah 31, verse 3. This is what he says. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. The Lord appeared to him from afar. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Simple. Why you? Because he has loved you with an everlasting love. He has, he has vowed to be faithful eternally to you. Still you may ask, but still, I hear what you are saying, but why me? The answer is simply because you are loved, you are known, and you are precious. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that, his, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God has entrusted me with the privilege of raising two boys. I love those boys. I love them to this. And, and I have to admit, though, that sometimes even I need a break from them. But trust you me, I would not be willing to let go of any of them for any of us here. Um, on, 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 on Friday, we were coming back from, from school, and it so happened that uh, Mordecai forgot his lunch back at school. You know, if you're a parent, you know these things, how painful they are, if you don't find them. So, 
when they get in, they find me preparing supper for them. And then the mother says, Mordecai has something to tell you. And then I say, what's up, Mordecai? And then he says, but first, will there be consequences? <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, <laughs> Mordecai. He's one of a kind. Always has to have a say. If we are eating, and Mordecai asks, um, what, why, why are we, oh, is the food nice? And then I say, okay, yes, they are. Mordecai would have to say something, and he can even go as far as saying, why do people eat? You know, that's how inquisitive it is, and that is how much I love my kids, and I would not be willing to let go of any of them. But here, we are shown a person or a God who loves us relentlessly, saying, I'm willing to let go of my one and only begotten son just for you, because you matter, because you are important to me, because I want you to be restored to your rightful place. I want you to be restored to your rightful place. But you may be asking, what if, what if there are things that I'm battling with, secrets that I'm keeping from the world, from anyone, would it still be after my heart? Would it still be after me? What if there is sin in me that I don't want anyone else to know about? What about then? <laughs> Let me tell you something. That will not stop him from pursuing you. Yeah. He wants you just as you are. Just as you are. And the Bible is full of stories of, of individuals like you and individuals like you and I who fell short, who, fell, who faltered along the way. And God still used them for mighty exploits. Look at Moses. God used him to save his children from Egypt. But who was Moses? Well, he met an Egyptian taskmaster and fled to the wilderness to escape an almost certain execution. But still, God used him. Ah, well, it was Moses. But what about David? What about David? He stayed home during the season when he should have been with his army. He was a voyeur who lusted for Bathsheba, committed adultery with her, and had her husband Uriah killed. And still, God used him. Let's talk about Peter. Peter was a quick tempered man. Remember the garden where somebody's ear was chopped off? Remember the person who said, who? Jesus, I don't know this guy. He denied Christ, but still God used him. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. God still loves each and every one of us. God still endlessly, persistently, and consciously pursues our hearts. What about Paul? Paul approved of the, sto of the stoning of Stephen, and he vigorously persecuted Christians before becoming one himself. The story of Paul is, is quite interesting because he believed all along that he was not lost until he was shown that he was lost. And he was found while lost and used from someone who was lost to somebody who wrote a whole lot of books talking about the person that he was persecuting, the God that pursued him endlessly. The God that pursued him endlessly. So you matter. That is why God pursues you. You are cared for. You are loved, you are precious, you are valuable. That is why God pursues you. You see, God will find you where you are and restore you to your rightful place. The more you want to keep things in order, the more they will fall apart. It is time to relinquish control. 
it is time to let him be the one that leads you. You see, I've got something in my pocket here. Most of you will know, well, there are some who do not know what this is. This is a one rent coin. Yes, it's a 1966 one rent coin. In my hand, it's just a one rent coin. In my hand, it's just a coin. But in the hand of a collector, this coin, in my hand right now even, is worth only one rent. But in the hand of a collector, I don't know how much it is worth. There's a poem here that I came across about in whose hands it is. I don't know who wrote it, so I, cannot, I don't want to take credit for it. It says, a basketball in my hand is worth about $19. A basketball in Michael Jordan's hand is worth about $33 million. It depends whose hands it is in. A baseball in my hand is worth about $6. A baseball in Mark Maguire's hands is worth about $19 million. It depends whose hands it's in. A tennis racket is useless in my hand. A tennis racket in Venus Williams' hands is a Wimbledon championship winning material. It depends in whose hands it's in. A rod in my hand will keep away a wild animal. A rod in Moses' hands will part the mighty sea. It depends whose hands it's in. A sling in my hand is just a kid's toy, but a sling, a slingshot in David's hands is a mighty weapon. It depends whose hands it's in. Two fish and five loaves of bread in my hands is, capable, is, is, is a couple of fish and sandwiches. Well, in my case, it will just be a starter. <laughs> Two fish and five loaves of bread in God's hands will feed thousands. It depends whose hands yeah. is in. Nails in my hands produces bed houses or lapper roofing. Nails in Jesus Christ's hands will produce salvation for the entire world. It depends whose hands it's in. As you see now, it depends in whose hands it's in. So put your concerns, your worries, your fears, your hopes, your dreams, your, family, your families, and your relationship in God's hands because it depends in whose hands it is. It depends in whose hands it is. Now we know this. Now we know that my life in God's hands is capable of much more than what I have dreamt of. What do I do? How do I respond to this? What do we do still? We get our answers from his word. He speaks in Isaiah 55. Verse 5 and 6, he tells us what to do. Seek the, world, seek, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may, be, that he may have compassion to him. And our God, for he will abundantly pardon Turn to him. 180 degrees turn to him. He will abundantly pardon. He will not be holding grudges about what you have done. He will not be holding grudges about what you have thought about. He will not be holding grudges about who you have offended. Just as you are, seek him. Turn to him. And he will restore you. And he will pardon you. He will forgive you. Let go and let God. It is time to commit faithfully to our God. It is time to repent. You see, the Bible talks of history, speaks of individuals in the Bible who still turned their hearts away from God, even after seeing all that he has done. Let us look at Nehemiah 9, verse 16 to 21. It says, 
That is Nehemiah 9, verse 16 to 21. But they, our fathers, acted presumptuously and stiffened their necks and did not obey your commandments. They refused to obey and were not mindful of the wonders that you have performed among them. But they, stiff -necked their, they stiffened their necks and appointed a leader to return to their slavery in Egypt. You see, some of us, God has taken us through one challenge after the other. He has carried us through one storm over the other. Sometimes we forget all these things and we stiffen our necks and forget about his goodness and always find our way going back to where we come from. Well, let's see what happened when the Israelites did this. But you are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and did not forsake them. Even when they had made themselves a golden calf and said, this is our God who brought us out of, who brought you up out of Egypt and had committed great blasphemies. You in your great mercies did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud to lead them in the way, the pillar of cloud to lead them in the way did not depart from them by day, nor the pillar of fire by night to light for them the way by which they should go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. Even in rebellion, even in their midst of rebellion, still God showed mercy on them. Still God pursued them. Even when they sinned against him, God still pursued them. He still went after them because they mattered to him. Even when you fail and you falter, God still will come after you. He pursues us. May we not harden our hearts. May we recognize our shortcoming and embrace his call. Some of us are like the lost coin. We come to church every Sunday just to tick a box. Sit, listen, and disappear. Sit, listen, and disappear. Just like the lost coin, the moment it was lost, the moment it was not where it was supposed to be, its usefulness could not be realized. And if we just only come to church and are not useful, our usefulness will never be realized. We will never be, be, be able to pursue his destiny that he has called us for. For some of us, it is time for a spiritual spring cleaning. It is time to let go of past bad spiritual habit. The time for unlearning and relearning is now. For some of us, it is time to get to know God afresh. To get to commit ourselves to him afresh. Some of us have committed and are committed, but are committed to the wrong things. I've been committed to one woman who happens to be my girlfriend for 17 years now. I have loved only her. I have committed myself to only her. Is it not time for us to recommit our lives to God? It is not time for us to let go of the element and the illusion of control in our lives and remember and understand that we are loved and he wants to marvel and have joy with us. Some of us are committed to always running away from commitment You see, our perception of who God is will determine our response. The right perception of God, hence the question, what is it that you know about God? That you know that you know. If you know him rightly, then you will respond to him rightly. If you know him correctly, you will respond to him correctly. Now, if 
you are sitting here among us and you are saying to yourself, I thought I was in the right place. I thought I was found. I thought I was walking the right path. But now I realize that I've been lost all along. Or if you are here and you have never given your life to Christ, all that is required is just total repentance. And he will embrace you, cover you, build his hedge of protection around you. And wherever you are, you can still feel his embrace covering you, warm hug, holding you closer. Now is that opportunity for you to turn away, to say, Lord, I want to re rededicate my life to you. Lord, I want to, to let go of all that I have for you. Now is the time. Now is the time. I would ask the, the worship team to please um, come to the fourth as we, we reflect. And if you are sitting there right now and you are saying, I want to, I want to recommit because he's committed to me. I want to recommit myself to him. As the worship team will be playing, you may stand and we pray together and recommit ourselves and recommit our lives to him. And even after the service, if you need anyone to pray with, I will be here. And my girlfriend will also be here to pray with you. If you feel led to rise up and to stand up and recommit, let's do so. No judging. The band will be playing in our back. And let me just pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, we, we have learned of how persistent you are towards us. We have seen how loving you are of us. Lord, we take time to reflect on our lives and our walks with you. Lord, we surrender all. Lord, we see your relentless love, your relentless pursuit of our hearts. So here we are, Lord. Recommitting ourselves, Lord God. Letting go of our past hurts to accept you for who you are in our lives. We surrender all, O oh Father God, for you have loved us first. For you followed us. You pursue us. Lord, we honor you. We exalt you, Jesus. Jesus.